Okay, I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech. More specifically, this is Coronaville. What's next here on a given Thursday? And we have our regular panel. Uh, we have Tim Apicello, Winston Welsh, Stephanie Stoll Dalton, and Cynthia Sinclair. And you guys are the greatest. You know, you've taken us through four years, a very nearly four years of aggravation with Trump, and come out alive and even even happy. Uh, the question now is whether we should continue to be happy. Yesterday was happiness. It was, um, you know, it, it was it was the um, the realization of all the efforts um, uh, to, to make Joe, Joe Biden the president and Kamala Harris the vice president. But we are not out of the woods, and uh, I'd like to talk a little about that. But uh, mostly, I'd like to talk, talk about uh, coronavirus. You know, I went and got my shot because I'm old. Um, and on Tuesday, no sooner did I get my shot when there was an article in one of the local papers about how they were running out of vaccine. No sooner did I see that article than I saw articles all over the country about how they're running out of vaccine. Um, and of course, uh, <clears throat> Trump failed to buy 100 million doses uh, that was uh, presented to the federal government a few months ago for, by Pfizer. And so here we are, and um, uh, Joe Biden is looking for the Defense Production Act, but it's not clear, according to the latest reporting, um, that that will actually work. It will create a supply line that will satisfy, uh, you know, the entire population. So far, it's only 16% of the population. It's small. 16% or 16 million, maybe 16 million. That's less than 16%. Um, so, you know, what you have now is, uh, you know, uh, not a complete solution. He says 100 uh, million doses in 100 days. Uh, Tim Apicella, can he do that? Can he manage that? I, I think his eyes are bigger than his stomach. I, I, I question whether or not the production of be it the Pfizer or the Moderna can keep up with that, that lofty goal. Um, you know, I think as far as implementation of the shot, I think that could be worked out. You can, you can mobilize all sorts of uh, options, you know, be it the military or, or you know, just volunteer nurses. Um, you know, you can get those, those needles into people's arms. I, I, I'm concerned about, as the article pointed out yesterday in the Star Advertiser, whether or not there's enough adequate supply or not. Yeah. So quite, what, what happens to a guy like me who had one shot and I have an appointment for a second, the second shot on a Pfizer uh, three weeks later, early February? Um, and there's not enough to go around. What happens? Do I turn into a pumpkin, Tim? I, I, I was under the impression they actually set aside the second dose, but maybe I'm wrong on that point. Okay, well, I'm, I hope you're right. I hope you're right about it. I may be wrong on that point, Jay. I, I, was, I was under the impression at least Queens Hospital was reserving that second dose and, and putting it in storage, but that was for nurses and doctors on the A1 program getting their shots. Uh, we're now in B1. And, uh, you know, that's the 75 or older category. And then soon C1, which is 65, and those that have immune compromised um, systems. Well, query, what happens if you don't, if you, you, don't, you don't get the second shot for whatever reason? Do you turn into a pumpkin then? Well, only if you're wearing your glass slippers, yeah, I guess so. I shouldn't no. refer to pumpkins because pumpkins look like you know who. He whose name should be erased. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I just, you know, it's like anything else. I mean, you still have the, the vaccine in you. Um, it's not as effective. And should yeah. you contract uh, either the, 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 the current case of COVID-19 or one of the variants, obviously it's not going to hold up as well. And you'll probably feel the, the effects of it much greater than if you had your second inoculate, your second dose. Okay. Winston, you're a worldly guy. Um, you know, if we have trouble here in River City and across the mainland, which we are, according to the press, having, what about the, the people in the developing countries? Um, they have, you know, this huge disparity of wealth and therefore a disparity of the availability of the vaccine. Um, you know, it, to what extent is that going to affect the world and how do we deal with it? Well, uh, you know, it Let's just face it. If you're, li if you're living in the so-called third world or fourth world, you're fairly getting shafted on everything of, of all types of things or as your resources may or may not get extracted. That, uh, that inequity is, it, it, it just exists. It will, it will eventually they will catch up because they, they, people realize that it comes around full circle. So, you know, we're just getting around to trying to eliminate polio. 
Um, it, it, but there's some some holdouts uh, due to I, I guess you, you know uh, confusion about the science or religious lunacy. So there it, it will get there eventually. However, there seems to be interestingly enough countries where they got the BCG vaccine seems to provide some some immunity for folks in a broad spectrum. So that's interesting. And we don't know what the real death tolls are in, in many nations. We can hardly yeah. find out the information here. Yeah. So what the real story is, it's just like, you know, when you read about these things, how many people died in World War One, and the estimates range or World War II, it's, it's, they could range by tens of millions in different numbers. So I don't think we'll ever know, Jay. But as far as your question to Tim, the internet, the source of all information that's true um, says that when I was Googling it, uh, we can always trust Google. said, so if you get your first shot, because I was interested in this for the senior members of, uh, that I love, like you, if you only get your one shot, how protected are you? Now, we know that and Pfizer and Moderna have said you need to get two shots. Um, for this to, to for full e efficacy, but it's what I read said that you get about 80% with your first shot and then you pull up to about 95% with your second shot. So if all you can get is the first shot, take it and come back and get your second shot. I think it, it's similar to, um, well, I don't know. I mean, does anybody know it's uh, to the uh, uh, shingles vaccine. So definitely start with your first one. They are going to have more vaccine. It's coming. Uh, a year ago, we didn't have any vaccine because we didn't have any COVID, but uh, they started working on it within that week. There will be supplies. There's new, um, uh, you know, AstraZeneca's coming out with one. Johnson Johnson's coming out with one. They're not based on uh, mRNA. There will be supplies rolling out. Until that time, we just got to keep up with our um, our own personal care and that of others. And I just saw the CDC or, or who came out and said, actually, time to wear a double mask with this new strain coming out. So put yeah, on that's a very uh, good little point. blue one underneath your, your cotton one. Um, yeah. uh, so just as a word to all the smart people who watch our show. Okay. And to all of the old people who watch our show, I just want to say that my experience with um, uh, Hawaii Public Health, Hawaii Public Health, yeah, uh, Hawaii Pacific Health, HPH, um, you know, the, those are the guys who run Straub and Kapilani Hospital and so forth. Um, at Pier, Pier 2, um, last, last Tuesday was excellent. They were organized. They were kind. They were friendly. Uh, they got the job done. There were really no hitches as far as I was concerned. More than that, they were not bureaucratic. They were, they were friendly and flexible. It was, a, it was a statement of the Hawaii ethic. They were completely aloha. And uh, that, was, that was very good. And the shot itself was painless. The experience was painless. And uh, although I was tired in the afternoon, that, that passed. I had no side effects at all. Um, so good for them. And uh, if you guys uh, get into the same situation, you'll see what I mean. Stephanie, um, not to refer to Winston, but Winston sent around an email this morning. And I want to talk about that. It's, uh, it was uh, essentially an article in The Atlantic about how Trump had done damage to the country uh, over his four years. And um, the damage, we didn't know. We did not know the extent of the damage. We do not know the extent of the damage. We do not, you know, we cannot even calculate until the reflecting pond and the, and the, and the candles the other day, we just could not digest how many people actually died here and how many mistakes you know, intentional or otherwise, he made about dealing with COVID. Um, so the question is, you know, does that affect your sense of optimism right now? Because the fact is, and he's still coming to bite us. Things we don't know about will bite us as they are revealed. What do you think of the article? What do you, what do you think of Winston's quote? What do you think of Winston? <laughs> I, I, I think highly of Winston's um, okay. and philosophies and, uh, and, and suggestions I, I, and comments. I mean, I think uh, we need the, that, that viewpoint to be well represented as Winston does do it. And then he's also this researcher who's finding all of this really important pithy uh, information from the, uh, the intellectual intellectuals who are good writers and can put out these incredibly 
informative article. So yes, I'm depending on Winston as a resource. <laughs> yeah, I think we're only gonna find out more and more, um, Jay, about what not didn't go right. I mean, in fact, I, I wanted to say that this morning, I, I looked at the TV this morning too, because the governor of New York, there, the New York is out of vaccine. They have shut down everything. Even all the people that were in appointments, they're shut down. They have no more vaccine. So they're waiting for it and they've got a huge need. So that I think is out here too, because I've seen notices that H, um, HPH, Hawaii Pacific Health, they're out of vaccine for peer two. Also, I don't know how much longer that's going to go on. So we're, we're awaiting it and we can understand it a little bit. We in Alaska, you know, they've got to ship it up here or out here. New York's right there where, you know, they're getting it right there on the East coast. So it's a little bit frightening. And I, I agree. We, what my concern has always been that there wasn't enough planning as usual with the last administration's uh, work, including all the things that Biden is correcting now, not just a knee jerk reaction, just whatever went through his head. And then with no consideration for the context, the interconnectedness, the, value re representation that the U.S. is uh, overall big policy history, et cetera. It's just, it, so all of it is going to turn out to be very harmful for our nation and all our population. I, I just think, you know, we, we will discover a lot and have a lot yet to suffer for having such incompetence in, in our uh, leadership and almost no policy. One, one of the things in uh, Winston's quote that he sent around was that um, sometimes you don't know you've been wounded and sometimes you find out later, like we are, I believe, going to find out. And sometimes those wounds that you didn't know about, that you find out later, can be fatal. Mm -hmm. So my point is, my point anyway, is that we're not out of the woods. There's more to come. There's other shoes to drop. Even if you never see or hear of Trump again, he's laid in so many mistakes and sabotages. Uh, Cynthia, what about the sabotages? I, we keep feeling, I, I, I believe the pardons, oh, pardon me, uh, the sabotages were, you know, like um, um, they were, they were they're time bombs. Um, and uh, we're going to see more of that as it comes out. But, but are you following the sabotages, all the things he's done to make life harder for Biden and the country? Well, some of them, yes. Um, I know I have some statistics about the virus and the vaccines, and it's um, stated that we got 35,990,200 distributed to us, but only 16,525,300 have been administered, which means we have 19 million. 464,869 doses that are not administered. Where are they? What are they doing with them? That's my question. Why aren't they sending some of those to New York if New York is completely out? So I, I wonder how much of the decision-making on who got how many doses was sort of predicated on, on whether or not they were Democratic states or Republican states. Because it seems to me that all the Democratic states are the ones that are going, wait a minute, we need help here. I have some more statistics that I think are very important and things that we need to not ever forget. And this is the days with the highest reported deaths. Okay, January 7th had 3,949. The 8th had 4,035. The 13th, or excuse me, the 12th had 4,462, which is the highest. Then the 13th went back down a little, up by much so, 3,963. And then on January 20th, the day of the inauguration, we had 4,229 Americans die, most likely alone. Now, I got some quotes from some interviews that were happening uh, this morning on uh, CNN. And it was, I have a quote from Jeff Zients, who is the White House COVID coordinator. And he says, what we've inherited from the Trump administration is so much worse 
than we could have imagined. He also went on to say that the only things that they know information wise were things that were regular public knowledge. There was nothing internal handed to them. And so um, Dr. Atul Gawande, who is on the, the COVID advisory board, he said that the, the vaccine plan was non-existent. They didn't have one. There was no plan. They were all breakthrough and no follow through. And I thought those were some important facts for our show today. Yeah, we don't know the extent of it yet. Right. No, I mean, he went in there and the White House cold in many ways. The, tra the transition was really not complete. Uh, that's maybe an understatement. So, so Winston, you know, what, what is it, is it the priority that he deal with COVID? Seems to me he can't, he can't get to the, um, uh, the economy until he does something with COVID and he may not be able to do COVID very quickly. You know, Joe Biden has so much to do, but I think what Joe Biden does is just standing there yesterday and giving his message having the people that he's put into his cabinet that uh, represent the best of America, they will carry out to the best of their abilities. When they were taking their oaths on the, the stand, I really felt like these people have my best interest at heart. And uh, you know, I was especially pleased with, with, uh, with Joe Biden when he said he represents all Americans, he really means it. He's not, he's not a, he, he, of course he was a Democrat, but he is there for all of us. And I think folks that really looked at that can understand he's a sincere person and he will do the best job he can with COVID, with the economy, with uh, oh, no, no racism, all of it. Hard, but can he succeed in beating off a major depression, economic depression in this country? Uh, you know, he, he has to. There's, there's not a, another choice. So he, he will. He will. He will do all that he can for our nation. We can't predict tomorrow, Jay. No one predicted uh, coronavirus a year ago. Well, I suppose a lot of people predicted that something like it would come about. But at this point, you know what? He's going to do the best job that he can. And I think that it, at least we have someone with motivation, with brains. Oh, yeah, with, we're in uh, infinitely better shape. I, I mean, it, it, it's, a, it's a sea change. So, so let's not... Um, uh, yeah, let's just let him do what he can do in the time that he can do it, because, you know, they're going absolutely breakneck pace to get as much done as they can. And he says, what, a, a, a hundred million doses in the first hundred days. It, if he thinks that they can do that, you know what? They have a goal and they are marshalling as many people as they can. Like Cynthia said, they got 19 million. They haven't administered. That's a fifth of the way there already. So uh, we're going to see a lot more coordination and cooperation with state, federal, and local entities than we have ever seen. Before. Okay, I'm feeling a little better, but I, I, I don't think we're out of the woods on this. And Tim, you know, we, we, we are looking for, we're looking for an impeachment trial in the Senate, lest we forget, you know, so many things have happened since the inauguration and, you know, about these things, these things about COVID and all the 17 proclamations yesterday, try and reverse Trump's, Trump's things, Trump's destruction. Um, but the fact is that we have, we have to deal with the trial. Um, and, you know, it, it's softening. What I mean, it's two things softening. One is Trump. I, I, we predicted this, right? You take him away from Twitter. You take them off the front page. You take them out of the news, television, news media, and the power just sloughs right off. And to some extent, I think that's happening. I think it's not clear yet. Um, but then we still have this problem, this nagging problem. Didn't didn't we set up an impeachment here? Don't we have to do that too? Are we going to have that, or are people like Josh Hawley in in the Senate going to stand in the way? Um, there are a lot of, may I remind you, there are a lot of Republicans in the Senate who don't want to impeach him. Um, so where, where are we on that, Tim? Have we forgotten about that? Will we forget about it? Will it happen or not? Uh, wow. Multi-faceted question there, Jay, and a good one. <clears throat> um, I listened to the interview on 60 Minutes with Nancy Pelosi, and then Joy Reid had a, a, an interview with Nancy Pelosi and Nancy Pelosi looked very committed to sending the articles of impeachment to the Senate for the trial. 
I think there's some strategy discussions taking place in the Capitol. Um, if I was Nancy Pelosi, I'd have to weigh the balance of the, um, the passion and the emotion for justice against the president who incited a riot on the Capitol, <clears throat> excuse me, versus the cooperation she may be getting and, the, and Chuck Schumer may be getting from a cooperative GOP. Uh, because they know right now they've been painted with the same, the same stain of, of almost treason uh, since January 6th, since the storming of the Capitol and the deaths of, of police officers and, and four other uh, individuals. So they don't want that stain on them. So right now they, they appear to be very cooperative. And my evidence for that was the comment that uh, uh, Mitch McConnell made on the Senate floor, uh, basically in black and white terms, stating that Donald Trump was responsible for the unleash of the mob that attacked the Capitol. And that's, if you, you know, Mitch McConnell is very, very selective in his word choice. And he doesn't come out, especially on the Senate floor, and be that overt in his statements. So it's a balance, I think. And, and yes, the answer is the trial would move forward. It will move forward. And there's an inner part of me that says it may be successful. It's the same inner feeling I had that somehow Georgia election could be pulled off. And that did, that, that did happen. Um, all logic said to me, no, it's not possible, but it, it did occur. And I think it's possible to get the 17 GOP senators to back this one up. And I think if Mitch McConnell's on board, we may well see that. Yeah. And you know what? COVID is an issue there. It's sort it's not in the, in the charges, but it is an issue. Everybody in the country, everybody right thinking in the country knows um, that, you know, um, that he, he wrecked us. He cost 400,000 lives. How, how do you start counting that? Um, and, and, and he did it with hubris. Uh, so I think that's part of getting, you know, getting rid of him, having the impeachment succeed. But Stephanie, you know, we still have, we still have the anti-vaxxers out there. We still have these QAnon people sitting, actually sitting in Congress. Um, we still have these guys walking around with uh, assault rifles among us. Um, we still have a lot of Trumpers. How do they play in all of this? How do they play in, in, in helping Biden or hurting Biden or trying to stop him the way, the way the Republicans try to stop and did successfully stop Obama on so many issues? Uh, they're still with us. I can tell you because we, you know, we get mail from them uh, on our YouTube postings. Um, and I always say, uh, when I send them around, I say, they're still out there and they are. And you can see them even on the you know, liberal channels that I watch, they still do stories on them. Uh, so um, where, how do they play? Well, I think you're, you, well, you're of course right. And they're, it's deep, it's sunken even more deeply into our world, our, our US world than ever before. And as we know, Timothy McVeigh, who took down the building in Oklahoma City, he was a member of one of these groups. So their history um, is real. Their actions are completely destructive and, um, and, and against all of our, um, our precious uh, goals and values. But I think that what's happening, I've heard that there are efforts to tamp down, well, in addition to to um, the the tech people getting the Twitter, getting Trump off the t Twitter and shutting up some of these voices. So cutting off some of these voices who have overstepped and that, that overstepping now is being examined and not just accepted as carte blanche free speech, right? First Amendment. It's not all First Amendment. So we're getting a little clearer and who knows, maybe we'll have a, another Supreme Court look at this, but that free speech doesn't mean you can talk about things that will lead to anarchy and to destruction and to violence. So there there are some actual limits on free speech, and I've heard some of these very expert lawyers talking about. Now, these haven't been retested again, but as you know, the history of court cases, that there's been an approach to it, but it's never been this much of an advance of these people and their actions to, to get enough rulings that we understand better about the First Amendment. So 
for now, the tech companies have taken that on. And I hear lots of criticism of what they've done, that that's imposing a restriction on free speech. So that's that question is coming out loud and clear. And then there's also now an effort. I don't know if it's the FCC, but whoever controls the airways for all of these multitudinous right wing radio stations, they're everywhere. And they're all in all of these places, you know, in our country, rural and Western and mountain and all of these areas have these people talking about the, the militia issues and, and they're discussing their concerns and their complaints and their criticisms. So until um, there truly is some um, abatement of that feed and that influence on these people, we're, we're, we're going to still have this right here in our lap. So we'll see as we go. Having yeah. him power that takes care of some of it so we've already got some some uh, interventions in place but we've got a, a long way to go with that i mean i'd like to hope too that biden just presenting himself in this way and i know he's being criticized for oh unity this unity that and on the fox you know they're re- ridiculing him how, how do you like this unity but um i think that he's powerful he's a powerful model. And I hope that that will also have some impact. Hold that thought. Hold that thought. We really have to see that come true. You know, over the past four years, Cynthia, <clears throat> we've seen the uh, reputation of the, of the country decline. Um, many countries pity us, you know. Uh, we, were, we were being judged. We were being judged. And we failed. We failed for the past four years in the eyes of millions, hundreds of millions of people around the world with Trump. <clears throat> and of course, uh, you know, the biggest test right now in the immediate sense, I mean, you can join the World Health Organization. Um, you know, you can try to put back the relationship with Europe. Um, you can try to, you know, have, have a, a better, more, mm, more fair, fair-minded relationship with a lot of countries in the world that have you know, lost respect for us. But it seems to me that the immediate thing is the pandemic. Why? Because the world is looking at us and we come up with one problem after another and dealing with it. We did that through the Trump time. Um, and, and now we're still having problems in deployment, distribution um, and all that. And so, the, you know, the question I, I put to you is, you know, if I get my shot, either as an individual or a country, OK, and the guy across the street sees that I get my shot and he doesn't get his shot. And he sees the disparity we were talking about. There's lots of sides to that question. How do we look to the world if we don't seem to give a rip about other countries at this point in time? And of course, the natural, the natural inclination is, I want mine first. This is life and death. I want mine first. Um, but what about our image in the country now, in the world now over this? Well, it's only been one day. <laughs> and in that one day, he's already done so much, and it wasn't even a full day. He didn't even start till about one o'clock. So, if he can do that much in a half a day, I have hope that that we will be moving forward every single day a little bit. We can't just you know snap our fingers and have everything be great and be organized and have this great plan. I know that from those quotes before that they were shocked that there was no other internal information to be found. So they have to start from scratch. So we, I think, like you said yesterday on Rediscovering America, we need to give them a bit more than that 100 day honeymoon, you know? Maybe we need to give them a little bit of extra time because they are not only dealing with nothing, they're dealing with being undermined. And like you said, landmines planted everywhere. And who knows when they're going to blow up, you know, and we've got people like the minority leader, Kevin McCarthy, just walking back every single thing he said about all of it. You know, oh, I had, I, I said it was no good, you know, never, I never, you know, uh, bought into the lie and all these other things that, you know, that are just a big lie. And so we're gonna have a lot of Republicans doing that. And that alone is going to change the atmosphere of everything. So I think we need to have hope, 
be positive like Winston. <laughs> we, we should avoid we should avoid taking issue with him. Of course, you know, the First Amendment, we have to express ourselves. But when we talk about honeymoon, um, we should talk about giving him a break. It, yeah. would, it would not be to our interest to have a squabble about some of his policies, how they don't really work so well. And he's making a mistake here and there. And, the, you know, we have to really give him a a complete honeymoon and not criticize him, at least for a period of time about what his policies are. Otherwise we're buying into the remnants of the, the Trump world. Yeah, well, so, don't watch Fox News because that's what they're doing. <laughs> yeah, no surprise, but I'm, I'm afraid I can't watch that. Uh, Winston, we're almost out of time and I'd like to go around the horn here and, and uh, get, you know, get your thoughts here in this moment. As Cynthia says, lest we forget, we're only one day out we're one day post inauguration. On the other hand, here, this group, this panel has followed, you know, the country and so many of these issues for a long time. And so we should have a sense of where we are on the continuum. Um, are we going to be okay? Or are these things, these, these wounds we don't know about, are they going to catch up with us? And, and more than that, what do we need to do uh, to, you know, preserve our opportunities and improve our chances of, of dealing with this and coming out okay. You know, we're doing it right now, Jay. Each one of us has to recommit to the best and highest ideals of this nation. And this is a great nation. We have stumbled and fallen these last four years. We made a bad choice as a nation. And now we have to fess up to it and, and, and repair. And I was just looking at, you know, Facebook says, here's your picture you know, four years ago. Well, it happened to be the day after the inauguration. Remember when everybody showed up and marched around the Capitol and wore colorful things and just said, no, this is not going to stand. This is not who we are. That's right. It was exactly that. And I, and I, and we knew then this was an aberration of our ideals and who we are as a people. And while we might be misled by certain elements of the media or by demagogues or whatever, we have come back to our roots. We have to pick up, dust off, find our better selves and move on. And that's all that we can do. We have to do it individually, uh, governmentally, corporately. Uh, these corporations have to step up and stop sponsoring ads on these uh, horrible stations that, that just promote lies. Yeah, and you know, that it's true. It's a good point. We know what we have to do. Trump has taught us what we have to do. Yes, we he has. And for that, we can thank that him. Lesson. He yeah. has shown us, he has shown us where we need to shore up. And so that's our job right now. And I have full faith and confidence that we will do that. And we will bring back our brothers and sisters in this nation who, uh, for whatever reason, um, supported him in the past. I don't think they do now. And I don't, increasingly, they will not as time goes by. I hope so. Stephanie, last words. I want to say the good news. Uh, I never thought that I would see a headline outside of the U.S., on a, on a paper which came out of Europe and it said, it's over. So <laughs> over. So there's, there's validation that they were suffering too. And just, they, are so, they so understand us, don't they? they don't it's like after 9-11 uh, in French, I, I can't do very well on this, but it's a two, two, new sommes, tous américains. Yes, we are yes. all American, you know? They, they, they do care. We still have the connection we had in, in the time of the revolution. So Cynthia, Cynthia, what are your last words? I, I, I mean, I just can I just say one more thing? And that for four years, five, four years, Americans have, all of us to our whatever degree, have followed the rules. We have allowed the rule of law. We all tolerated this. We, we abided by the law. So, the, so there's lots to say about that we did what we say we do. And we need to take credit for a good job of that throughout the four years. Yeah, I, I, but I tell you, me, I can still feel the whiz of that bullet by my ear. It was close. Mm -hmm. uh, Cynthia, your final thoughts. Misinformation is a rampant problem still to this day. And just because Trump is gone, excuse me, just because the maniac is gone does not mean that the misinformation is going to stop because it's not. It doesn't only come from him. And, and I think I'm a good uh, sort of example of how anyone can fall 
prey to the misinformation. I thought I was following this great lead to go check out this Dominion company. And, and it shows me that not only do they put it out there for, um, you know, the misinformation for the, the Republicans, but, you know, or these conservative people, but it's also couched differently. Like for me, it was couched that it was, Dominion was owned by a Russian company. For them, it's couched that Dominion was owned by a Venezuelan company. So it's like, um, we have to be very, very careful about everything we read. Yeah, we need- yeah, yeah. Let me, let me add that I, part of this is the uh, emergence of the internet and social media. And um, where you get your news from sources that are not necessarily reliable. And that, and that one of the ways to really get your news best is in a group, a discussion, um, even on, even on uh, you know, Zoom or like this, where you can bat it around and you can test out your ideas or what you've heard. And somebody can say, no, Jay, you're all wet about that. I love when that happens. So, Tim, tell me I'm all wet. You're not all wet. <laughs> You're just not all wet. And you got your vaccination. I'm happy for you. Um, you know, let me just, I'd like to just end by saying, you know, you, you made a reference to a, a bullet whizzing by your ear. And that is a great analogy because that's exactly what happened to our democracy, the Republic. And we had a clumsy, inept assassin who, who shot that bullet past your ear. And so as we move forward as a nation, as Joe Biden and the administration moves forward, uh, and repair that which we don't know yet that needs to be repaired, repair that which we know is damaged and broken, we're also going to have to institute justice. And we had an assassin who made a, who, he, who, who rang out a shot at us and this democracy, and that cannot go unanswered. And it has to serve, serve as a signpost for any new would-be Trump that comes around the corner, be a Democrat, Independent, or Republican, that you're not going to be successful. And these, these, these stop measures need to be put in place, fortified, so that the, the republic is preserved and dem- uh, democracy is preserved and the media is not manipulated to serve that purpose. There it is. Okay. I'd like to add one other thought. Is it, it's that George Santayana thing about he who doesn't remember history is doomed to repeat it. And uh, we have to remember what Trump did. We, could, we shouldn't block it out. We shouldn't try to forget it, even though it was so unpleasant. Um, we should remember it and we should, we should treat it as part of a historical continuum. Um, and if we, if we let it go without re- requiring accountability, my guess is we will repeat it. So it's really important that we see it in a historical context. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you, Cynthia. Thank you, Winston. Great discussion. Look forward to the next time next week. Aloha.